Hey everyone, this is Nick with Connect Labs. We have Sue Montegari here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, uh, Thanks for having welcome me. Welcome tonight. Uh, my name is Sue Montegari and I'm the Girls Director of Tri-State Lacrosse. All right, Sue, thanks very much. So how did you get involved with lacrosse and uh, what led you to create your club team? Um, my sophomore year at high school, at Ridgewood High School, we um, started a program and a girlfriend of mine said, do you want to go play? And I jumped on board and fell in love with the sport ever since. Awesome. Yeah, it was really what it created. So obviously you guys have a great program, you know, you've been around forever. Um, you know, what should parents and players be looking for in a club team? Uh, club culture is really the most important thing. You want to find a place where your child's going to thrive. They're going to feel comfortable. They're going to be in a uh, environment that they will feel okay to make mistakes mm -hmm. because with making mistakes is where they're going to grow and have that potential. You want to look at the coaching staff that's on it. Um, how long have they been coaching? Do they coach high school and college? Um, those are the really items that you're really looking for. Right. Yeah, the experience is key. Yeah. Help to, you know, help the players understand kind of what the next level is like. And yeah, and help them through the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that you've got coaches that are going to help your kid have the connections that they need, the college coaches' connections, that they can call up uh, one of the coaches and say, hey, I've got a great kid, and they're going to take that word to go look at them. Awesome. And, you know, when you guys are holding tryouts, you, you have a great staff and everything. What is it you look for in a player? You know, what? who do you want to be a part of your culture? Like, what, what kind of qualities look for in a player? There's a couple of them that I'm always kind of searching for. You want your, of course, the, the one that's athletic, mm -hmm. um, but you're also coachable. We're looking for our coaches to be supporting those kids and giving them constructive criticism, and we want to see the athletes that come back and are making those changes in those drills. Sure. We're also looking for the ones that seem passionate and comfortable in a setting that's new. Um, during the recruiting process, in any time in life, you're gonna be putting in situations that you're not comfortable, mm -hmm. you may not know people, sure. and so we wanna see who steps into those roles um, and, and are successful in that. Awesome. So obviously you spoke about new and you know things changing. You know, how has your role as a club director changed in the recruiting process over time? The recruiting process has changed dramatically over the years. Um, five years ago, we were really just dealing with the junior class. Mm -hmm. And they were waiting for that call on July 1st um, for those colleges to call them. And now we're incorporating four, possibly five grade levels. Wow. Uh, and all of them are in the process during a different time, mm -hmm. depending on even the division, one, two, and three. Yep. And you know, are you a sophomore or a freshman in the, looking for division one, or are you um, Division three, looking at them as well. So it really has become much more impactful for your club coaches um, and your club to be involved in the recruiting process. Absolutely. And helping you along the way with the communication that you need to be able to be successful during it. Absolutely. So obviously you guys do a great job at vetting the players become a part of your program and it's helped you guys build the great program mm -hmm. you have. Um, you know, what kind of questions do college coaches ask you when they're looking at particular players? You know, I've heard everything from you know, like look at their social media to like, you know, what are they like off the field and how they interact with other players. You know, what, what kind of questions do you really come across? Well, a college coach can watch the skill concepts on the field. They can see that black and white and they're looking more of a deeper level of the student athlete. Um, how are they academically? What is their relationship with their family? Are they an only child? Do they have siblings? Do we think that they will thrive in an environment six hours away or on a plane sure. ride? Um, or is that kid gonna have to transfer home? Mm -hmm. They're looking for those kids that will be able to acclimate to a new setting, new coaches away from your parents, away from your families, um, and who's gonna be successful. So they're really looking for that next level of depth um, and really just coachability. How long have you known them? Mm -hmm. How have they developed over those years? Have they been open to your communication or are they more of an introvert? Um, they want to kind of see the, the deeper stuff. Right, they want to have a complete view of yeah. who that person, that player is as a person. Basically. Yeah, I've had some of them ask me, are the parents divorced? Um, what are the financial needs? Because again, between academic and athletic scholarship money, you know, if you have two players and one needs more athletic money, that, that comes into play sometimes. So mm -hmm. um, sure. they want to know the fiscal um, support, and that's the, the information that the parents have to be privy to opening up to the club coaches and the directors in the program so that we can help guide them to the best of the ability. It doesn't help if you're looking at a division three and it's financially out of your you know, financial spectrum. Yep. You have the kid go through the whole process and then at the end of the day, they don't have financially be able to go there and then the kid's sad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody wins in that. No, it's a loser exactly. there. 
so obviously there's a lot of information and misinformation out there. Um, you know, what advice would you give to parents and players that are in the recruiting process right now? Um, I know parents in particular are always curious about what their role would be, and I, I know you did a great job of just explaining, you know, under, talking to financials with the coaches and everything, but what would you say is some great advice uh, for parents and players in the recruiting process? Um, it's never too early to start. Um, if you're on a vacation and you're near a college or a university, take your sixth and seventh grader, just drive through the campus, take mm -hmm. a look at it, and you can start figuring out whether they would even like to go to a school of that magnitude. Um, two, making sure that you are involved. It, it is a process that the children have to, the student athletes need to go through, mm -hmm. but they also need the support of the parents. They are sometimes, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old making yeah. life decisions that are going to be happening, you know, four years from now. Exactly. And help guiding them and supporting them, but giving them the opportunity to be able to be a part of that process as well. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And, you know, obviously players are always trying to get better, you know, they're working on the wall or, you know, working in the classroom. You know, what advice do you have for players to, you know, better themselves? Um, to put themselves into new situations. Go to a clinic. Um, even if it's a school that you may not be looking at, be coached by a different style of coach. Mm -hmm. um, because even during your collegiate years, you could have the same coach for four years, but you also could have two coaches or three different coaches or sure. a coach could recruit you and then the coaching staff changes and you're going to be expected to produce for with another coach. So just putting themselves into situations that when they are away from home that they're able to handle, you know, any conflict conflict or any success on their own. Yep. And I know you mentioned scholarships, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting into the school and, uh, you know, having that really be a hurdle, um, mm -hmm. you know, academics obviously are coming to play, you know, mm -hmm. athletic scholarships aren't that popular anymore. Right. You know, now it's like government grants and grade based right. everything. So what would you say is some good advice, you know, in the classroom? Uh, first of all, you're a student athlete. So your academics has to come first. Um, if you cannot academically get into the school or even if they're able to get you into the school, you have to be able to be successful during your four years and have the eligibility to be able to participate. There is no point in going to a school where you're not gonna be able to reach your full potential in both areas right. and not be able to then participate in the spring or in your fall ball. Great, I think that's awesome. Thank and you. you know, obviously there's a lot going on. What are some common pitfalls you see? Like where you see people kind of stumble and trip in uh, the process? Sometimes waiting for the process to come to them. Mm -hmm. This is a process where are, there are thousands of student athletes that are going for those 10, maybe 15 positions um, each recruiting class in the whole country. So you have to make sure that if this is something that you want, that you are proactive in the experience. Um, you have to take your child and you have to put them in situations where they are exposed to these college coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and. And, and be able to do it with a smile on their faces too, because they yeah. need to be able to be in these environments and be successful too. Absolutely. So you guys, again, have a great program. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what separates you guys from other programs in your area? Uh, I believe that we're a family. Uh, Tri-State um, is, is a, about being a family from the moment that you step on until you graduate and you're an alumni and you're coming back and either coaching for me yeah. or coaching at the college level and updating me there. It's always exciting that I have now players that are currently coaching college and I coached them you know, when they were seventh grade and they've been a part of the Tri-State program and now they're um, assistant coaches at Colby or Montclair State or you know, other areas and it's exciting to be able to see that their passion of about being a part of us led them to not only playing collegiately but wanting to continue um, it moving on. Awesome. And you know, some, what are some of the top high schools in the area? I know we're here in um, Morristown. You yep. know, what, what would you say are some of the top high schools that you have on your team? Um, we're lucky. We have some really great talented players. Um, Immaculate Heart, Morristown, um, Ridgewood. We've got girls from Chatham and Mendham. So we do have those top 10, top 20 schools all playing for us in our club team. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, where are you guys gonna be this fall? This fall, we've got um, prime time in Maryland. Mm -hmm. We're at Fall Faceoff and the Fall Opener in Flemington, New Jersey, and then we're ending up at the IWLCA and President's Cup in Orlando, Florida. You guys can go all over the place. That'll yeah. be the, the final one. That's going to be a nice one. It's yep. A the next three weekends are busy, um, yeah. but it's a time to be able to get it done and get out there and get those kids shown in front of those uh, college coaches so that they can achieve their goals. I know we and other people are very excited to see you guys play. Thank so, you. Um, Thank you. Uh, you know, speaking of playing, you know, what are some highlights from the summer? Like, what would you say were, were some of the best ones? 
Um, we had teams that went 4-0. and We had teams that um, won some championships. Uh, at the end of the day, though, awesome. all of that is really exciting at that moment, but it's when those kids get committed to a college mm -hmm. of their choice That's that they exciting. really wanted to. And they you know, text us or call us and are like, thank you so much, we couldn't have done it without you. Knowing that they've set their you know, goals and they were able to achieve them with the support of us is mm -hmm. really what our goal is at the end of the day. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's probably the most rewarding part, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it really is. It's the it's the smaller stuff that you see someone either grow from the beginning of the season to the end of the summer. Um, also seeing them like achieve their commitments, but also just seeing the teams really enjoy each other. Yeah. Um, enjoying, you know, coming up with their team cheer mm -hmm. and spending time with each other and doing yoga poses on the sidelines, you know, in between games um, or the tent parties. That's the stuff that really makes memories that mm -hmm. are going to keep those kids kind of focused and remembering why they play this game. They play this game at the end of the day because they love it. Yep. So we want to make sure that that's always a major point for us. Lax for life. Lax for life. Live, love, lax. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what are some notable players you have that are uncommitted right now? Um, some standouts. I know you have a ton of talent in your guys' program, but to name a couple, who would you say? Um, we've got Michaela O'Neill. She's a 2018. She's a six-foot um, draw specialist. Wow. She actually plays at um, Immaculate Heart Academy for me there. Mm -hmm. So um, just her height alone is just so exciting to be able to see. Yeah, wow. Six-foot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's awesome. And she's only, you know, 15, 16 years old. Great. So you mentioned, uh, you know, Tri-State's family. You're very focused on, you know, family-centric. How would you say that that connects your youth program and your high school program? Well, first of all, our practices are all at the same time. Awesome. Um, two fields, side by side, so that if you have a daughter that's older and a daughter that's in the middle school program, you can actually bring them and be convenient and be able to drop them off and pick them up at the same time. It also allows our middle school girls to be able to look across the field and be able to see where they want to be and who they would like to kind of mirror themselves after yeah. um, and vice versa it allows the older girls to come down and be able to support the younger ones sometimes we'll do our dynamic dynamic warm-up together um, so that they're you know matriculating and integrating each other um, and looking up it's always important to have role models that you want and there's nothing better than having someone that's in the program being a role model to these kids right and someone that you you can kind of um you know, match their style. Some of you have a style that's similar to yours and then they can look to that person for ideas and then vice versa that, you know, they can, um, you know, teach and learn at the same time. And we've actually had middle schoolers come over to the high school practice mm -hmm. and just have the teams watch um, and go over concepts that we've been teaching at a higher level so oh, that wow. the girls can see a bigger picture of not just the simplistic of a settled attack pass and screen away, right. but actually seeing multiple components of a settled attack um, for them to be able to see it at that higher level. Very cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously family, that's, that we've mentioned that multiple times now, you know, what would you say is the mission of Tri-State? Well, my husband and I um, both played lacrosse. We met at an alumni game at Ridgewood. Mm -hmm. And my husband actually played for Tri-State when he was in sixth grade. Wow. So when I was hired years ago, he knew Mr. Turco and he knew Tri-State and what it was all about. So our family has always been somehow connected with it, and now my, my children are starting to be a part of that family as well. And what's exciting for me is that we're creating an environment where the kids all come together. These student athletes, these girls from when they're 10 years old picking up a stick for the first time, are in an environment that's different, that's fun, that is th um, filling their, you know, their passion for the sport mm -hmm. in an environment where they're going to be successful and it's okay to be make, make mistakes. Probably have some girls that you've known since they were young and now they've like gone and graduated college even and um, you know come back and give them the program full circle. Um, you have some girls you can think of? I have a couple. Um, one of them is now the assistant coach at Colby. Oh, wow. um, she played at Trinity, Renee Olson. Mm -hmm. um, I've known her since like fifth grade where she started with the program at, and um, graduated and went on and um, really excited for her. And then Tierney Conlon, who came back as an all-star coach um, and now is our Shore Regional Director. And she is the assistant coach at Montclair State. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to see her and her siblings go all the way through the program and then they are continuing to give back after to the sport. That's fantastic. Well, hey, I mean, I really appreciate your time, and Thank this you. has been great. We're really looking forward to see what you guys do with Tri-State this year. Thank you very much. And uh, look forward to it. Uh, you. Obviously, you're heading all the recruiting. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I, was, I started with Tri-State back in September. Uh, September um, 
came back to Tri-State, I should say. I played Tri-State my whole life. Um, <laughs> family. Yeah, definitely. It's yep. a family organization. Um, recruiting in the last couple of years has kind of changed pretty drastically. Um, sure. And me being a high school coach, how I started getting into it is I wanted to make an impact off the lacrosse field and kind of more of my players' lives. And so I kind of dove into the recruiting thing. Um, I had a short stint at uh, Manhattan College and kind of got to learn a lot of the NCAA rules and going right. through that. Brought it here and at Morristown and then just kind of developed a passion for it, interested in it. And I think um, one of the biggest things that I like about it and why I wanted to get into it is the end result, is you're knowing that you know, you're not just winning games, you're not just teaching lacrosse, but you're sure. having an impact on that player's life. And, and you have a unique perspective where you've been able to be on both sides. So you've been yeah. on the, you know, the coaching side at the high school level, mm -hmm. and you're also at the college level receiving the players yep. as well. So Absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's two different worlds, it's two different sides, but I think at the end of the day, the goal is the same. You know, we're, we want to try and find a home for our players um, that they're going to spend four years at, and at the same time, the college coach, they want it to be a home for those players. Absolutely, absolutely. And is there any advice that you'd give to parents and players right now? I know, like I said, you've been able to see both sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, you know, what would you say from a college coach and a high school coach perspective, um, advice-wise? Yeah, I think that from a college coach's perspective, they're looking at you know thousands of emails, thousands of videos, going to all these different tournaments. So for them, they're looking at so many different players, and they're trying to find something specific. Sure. So from my perspective for a parent and for the player it's you got to put yourself out there you have to get your name known you can't rely on just playing in a tournament somebody's going to see you You can't rely on that mm -hmm. you know the recruiting director of your club or a coach is going to do everything they can to get you in a school right. i think the biggest advice i have is if you put the work in and you have certain goals it, the goals are realistic you'll meet them but you have to put the work in. you have to put the time in to do that Great. That's great mm -hmm. advice. Well, hey, appreciate it. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you so and, much. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys this year.